I'm going to be honest, don't really know what I'm doing. He was often a player that I would buy on Football Manager. That's it's already a terrible reason. From Jon Snow, Matt puts Dan's wardrobe to shame. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Look at him, the cat that got the cream. Ian Taylor said it was the worst thing he'd ever seen in his life. Monk, really, he's, what's he, I know Monk. he's manager. What kind of thing is that? Gary Monk. Five out of ten. I, know, I haven't finished yet. I cannot believe Gabby had Bonner Horse. That's crazy, that's isn't terrible. it? That's terrible. Yeah, we may well have lost listeners early doors again with a long, long-winded intro. Go, shoot. Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast episode number 16 with me, Dan Bardell, triumphant return, and Tom Julian, also a kind of a triumphant return as well because you did very well last week, so a week gone by, you've returned as well. So, yeah, well done. I want to be the first to congratulate. Well, not the first, because I'm sure you've been congratulated already. I want to congratulate you on your performance last week. I think you did very well. I have watched it, watched it back. I think you were helped by having about seven or eight people on who knew how to talk about Villa and football. I think that did help you. But you did hold it together very well. Very good lead presenter, so I can only commend you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dan. That's very, uh, very gracious of you. It was great fun last week. Um, not as fun as having you in the studio, of course. Um, but if you missed it last week on the Villa View, Dan was uh, holidaying, sunning himself, as you can see. International um, break. International break for you, indeed. Um, and so we had... Villa View kind of regulars on, I suppose. You, we had a we had a few people that you might be familiar with if you watch the fan cams. A um, few younger, well, one younger. Uh, yeah, I was going to say there was uh, Well, Matt's quite young actually. That's true. And yeah. we had one older statesman as well, didn't we? We had uh, yeah, not very happy with his with his performance. We had uh, Bardell Senior on, who did a wonderful job. Um, great to chat with Dave about Villa and about life in general. Any thoughts, Dan, on uh, on your dad's performance? I've got one thought. My main thought is is that. Obviously, I've been doing the Villa View for, I don't know, 18 months or so or so now. He's never once said that he wanted to come on the show. He stands there while we do fan cams, and obviously any fan is welcome. He's never once put himself forward to come on fan cams. And then the week that I'm not here, he suddenly decides he wants to get involved. Oh, he, I approached him. No, I know, I know. Because I, know. I, I, take, I take the motto, no Bardell, no podcast, very seriously. You made it clear. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to get that loophole in, make sure that the podcast wouldn't be uh, ripped up at the last second. What would you have done if he said no? Got your mum on. She would. What have you done? She'd said no. Oh, she would. She fancies me. And she, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> God uh, knows why. She's got appalling taste. <laughs> what, what does that say about your dad? Well, you, you do the math. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, this is maybe why he never wants to come on fan <laughs> camp. <laughs> probably, probably is. Um, there was a rumour that you were going to try and uh, sabotage my uh, my one man podca- podcast. Well, it wasn't a rumour. I've just told you. Yeah. Not a rumour. Cool. I've, well, I've just come in and told you off camera what I was going to do. Well, tell, tell so the world. So my internet connection abroad in Portugal had been a bit better I was going to dial in with Skype audio and put on a voice and pretend to be a random Villa fan and I was going to disagree with everything that you said and keep asking where Dan and Matt were I mean it would have been a good effort but I don't think you could have pulled it off Rollinson was up for it oh yeah, yeah I, it, was, it would have been funny but I think your uh, your accent would have cracked early I'm a performer I mean it would, having a Brummie accent isn't going to be a problem because you're talking to Villa fans oh yeah but I, I just think yeah. a fake Brummie accent is even harder yeah that's true I'd have gone a bit peaky blinders, probably. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If I, was gonna, if I was gonna do it. Did you have a nice time? Did you have a nice break? I did. It was really, really good. I'm really disappointed to be back. I'm happy to be doing the podcast, but in general, I'm not enjoying being back at work. No. I'm finding it very difficult to get back into work I, mode. I think that's fair enough. You look a little bit coloured, but you always have a bit of a always. bit of a tan. You know, you're always on the sunbed, so uh, <laughs> it doesn't make a massive difference to you. I do look at someone told me that like a Mexican. <laughs> okay. With my facial hair and my new haircut. If we got you a big, uh, big hat. Can do. You're obviously obsessed with hats now. Yeah, that's true. Just, just like to point out that Tom wore a hat to the podcast last week. I've never once wore any headwear to a podcast, so I find the joke a little bit mute. Do you? If, Did if, you? If you get me. What was your? Uh, that was that was my big reveal. What was what was the thought when you saw the hat? I didn't mind you did it. I minded my dad coming on it. <laughs> Though he's like an idiot. <laughs> he did, but it was brilliant. <laughs> very, very good. So it is International Week. Um, we've been, uh, well, we haven't been without football, but we've kind of been without quality football. Um, yeah, England's hard work, isn't it? it, it very if, you much thought, is. if you thought Villa were hard work, England's even harder work, if you ask me. Do you want to know a secret? You haven't watched England yet? I didn't watch last night's, no. I watched the second half. Uh, I broke my own rule. Oh yeah, you did. But I played yeah. football manager at the same time. As only hard. I was in and out of it. Dan's rule, if uh, if you're not aware, is that if he misses a li- even a minute of a, of a game, then you're not going to watch any of it. Unless it's Villa, unless it's Villa. But then I'd never miss 
a minute of a Villa game anyway, so fair enough. Doesn't really make sense. Yeah, fair enough. So uh, I haven't got any hot takes on on England other than the, what I've read and seen the highlights, where it's just been a bit kind of yeah. It's just England, isn't it? They'll qualify with relative ease, and then they'll turn up at the tournament, try something different that they've not tried all through qualifying that's worked. And they get knocked out. I didn't mind. Uh, I quite enjoyed the Deli Alley trying to make the excuse that he was giving the middle finger to Kyle Walker. Even though, have you seen the pictures yeah, where Kyle yeah. Walker's like the, behind him essentially? Um, I, I quite find, find that quite funny. I saw a comment earlier on Twitter that's like, if he's going to get done for that, then it, every player should be getting done everywhere because players swear at the officials through every game. Well, I, my the bee in my bonnet, and I won't get onto this very long, but you get uh, uh, kind of European nations or whatever will get a kind of £30,000 fine for throwing bananas or, or racist yeah. chants or whatever and Deli Ali will probably get double that and a yeah. two match ban or something like that You're something as, right. as, as silly as that so we won't get too much into the England game um, do, you, do you feel a bit like this is what it feels like to me because I've been away for a week obviously it's like almost like I'm the international player that's been on been on away on international duty representing the country at the highest possible level and you've like been left at the training ground and you're on your own because you're not good at international <laughs> football oh, well I've never considered it but uh, yeah maybe you've now got I'm a point now I'm back with all my tales of what I've been doing abroad you're like I'm trying to think of a player that doesn't go on international duty can't think of one. Ross McCormack at the moment. Ross McCormack doesn't go anywhere. No, that's no. true. Uh, you look a bit more like Ross McCormack. I do. Um, but uh, I'm a Tom Julian bug. <laughs> the uh, eating too much. hashtag love handles is catching. It's trending, ladies and gentlemen. Well, shall we turn our attention a little bit to Villa? Um, Why not? As we are seven minutes in and we've barely mentioned Villa yet. <laughs> yeah, it's probably probably about time. Um, football is back this weekend. You love saying that. Football is do back. Do I say that? You a say lot? it all the time. If you've just been off for one day, you'll say football is back. Oh, I um, I'm not sure where I get that from, but I, I know, but but it comes. Well, it is coming back. Yeah. Um, in the shape of Brentford at home. How do you feel about that so far? They're a team that caused us problems last season. I'm quite worried about the game on Saturday actually because Brentford caused us problems last year. We didn't beat them. In fact, we got absolutely annihilated at Gr- is it Griffin Park. Griffin Park. Griffin, yeah, Griffin yeah, yeah. Park. Last season I was there. It was horrendous. Just horrible, down the road from here. Difficult to watch. And they've got off to a bad start. They're bottom of the league, aren't they? Yeah. They haven't won a game yet. They've had a lot of shots, though. A lot of shots on target, but they've still they've not been putting the ball in the back of net. So something tells me they're due a performance and due a win. Yeah, I was just going to say that. It's, it's kind of one of those games, isn't it, where both teams will think that they can probably get right in this game. I and mean, Villa have obviously had a couple of really good performances. Bristol City, kind of an, another one that's that away form lingering. But at Villa Park... You know, Villa fans would expect a win on Saturday. Just going on to Brentford slightly, because obviously I wasn't here last week and didn't get to give my thoughts on it. Brentford away... Uh, Brentford, Bristol. Bristol yeah. away in the second half when we went 1-0 down. It's one of the first times I've sat there and thought, right, and we got back in the game, and I've sat there and I thought, right, we understand what the championship's about now because we got straight back into the game and arguably could have gone on and won it. It was just In the second half, I felt like we finally got to grips with the championship, I don't know why, because obviously there's games we've won and we didn't win that game, but I just, I finally start to feel like we we understand the league now, the players understand it, they understand about playing for Villa, and I kind of feel like Steve Bruce is starting to get it a bit more now, that he's got to attack, he's got to have a go, because otherwise he'll be out of a job, basically, so I kind of thought that game, for some reason, that it's all come together. You, think, you feel like that's a the turning true, point? The true test now will be what happens on Saturday, Tuesday, with the two home games, because if, if we can win them, and obviously we've got a good bit of momentum that will be four unbeaten in the league and we can hopefully go on and put together a good run. September's massive starting with the starting with the Brentford game. There's a lot of home games in there. There's a lot of winnable games. I'm not going to go as far as Chris Dolan to say that we're going to be getting 18 points or whatever it was he said. Yeah, yeah, he, he really went for it, didn't a, he? He's a pessimist as well. Wow. Usually. Oh, well, we're going to win every game 4-0 then. But I think, well, I don't think we will. No. <laughs> but we should be looking to get at the lowest of the low 12 points. Do you want to go through it? We uh, we did yeah. this last week. We went through all of the games and I've still got my notes. Well, uh, have you got a Villa View notepad now? Is that what you no, class this, as your Villa View notepad uh, where you the, just have Villa View notes in? No, this is my work notepad, but uh, obviously I do. Oh, your employer. You know. employer doesn't see this. Yeah, me too, actually. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, Brentford at home. Uh, I'll go for the win. Borough at home. Draw. I'm not writing these ones down, so I'm going to have to commit this to memory. Yeah. Uh, Barnsley away. Mm, win. He's on telly, which is a problem. Um, then we've got Borough in the Cup. We'll ignore that one. Yeah. Forest at home. 
Draw. Burton away. Win. And Bolton at home. Win. It's 14 points. 14 points, yeah. I'd, be, good, I'd take that. Good maths. I'm slightly annoyed that that's you got bit, to the maths. That's unbeaten. I was doing it on my fingers as, oh, I was, yeah. as I was doing it, yeah. You got that many fingers? Yeah, well, was, you, can follow <laughs> on, you can follow on, Tom. Yes, I understand. Um... Yeah, 14 points, that'd be a, a pretty decent return, and you'd think most Villa fans would be happy with that, Chris Dolan aside. Oh, Chris Dolan won't be happy with anything but 18 points and a plus 50 goal difference. And uh, obviously we'll go through the cup as well against Borough. Do you think that will? Because Matt, Matt wasn't confident in the I cup. I kind of agree with Matt, but it depends what Middlesbrough do. If we played, if both teams play reserve sides, and obviously we've got a good chance. If Villa go into the game with a reserve side and Middlesbrough play their full strength, mm-hmm. obviously we'll be in trouble. But do you think it's weird playing Borough, obviously, at... In the league and then playing them so quickly again in the cup, do you think that's going to affect the players, affect tactics or that kind of thing, or do you not? It's one game at a time. I think sometimes it can work to your advantage because I think it happens more often than you think it does as well. But I remember 99 2000, we seemed to be playing West Ham every week, and Ian Taylor had a real knack for scoring against West Ham, and he scored something like four in three in that, ba- in that batch of games mm-hmm. against us. So sometimes it can, it can work to your advantage. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. So Brentford, two home games as well. Yeah, so you'd like to think at home we're strong. Yeah, and that really puts a dent in in Middlesbrough's momentum. Then I think if you lose two games against the same team, that that really will have a disheartening effect on a team. I would have thought. To me now, this is where the season. I know the season has started. Obviously, it's a stupid thing to say. The season starts now, but everyone's done the business now. Everyone knows they're going with what they've got till January. So you start to think that people all. Shape will start to emerge. Managers preferred 11s. They know what they want to do. They know what they've got at their disposal. So it would be a good test September now. Absolutely. Villa. But having that amount of home games is paramount. That's massive. I wanted to talk to you about the striker situation. Obviously, Keenan Davis um, has had that form before the international break. Scott Hogan returning to a team where he arguably played his best football. Yeah. Who's going to play up front? Davis, I would have thought. Yeah. Yeah, there's no no reason to change it because since Davis has come in, we haven't lost. And he's been effective. I know he hasn't scored, but he's made the people around him better. And you know I'm a big advocate of Scott Hogan. I really, really like him. But you can't take Kenny Davis out of this team at the moment. It would be stupid to. Yeah, absolutely. We've got... Um uh, While you were missing last week, we obviously signed Robert Snodgrass. Yeah. And um, it'd be remiss of us not to talk about that a little bit. Just... In terms, we, we we talked about it a couple of weeks ago about how he fits in. Do you think he, he comes in and starts? I don't think he'll start on Saturday, but I think he will be a starter for most of the season, mm-hmm. unless barring injuries and bad form. He'll be one of the first names on the team sheet because, as I said, I think the last time I was on the podcast, Bruce knows him. He knows he can be effective at this level. Snodgrass knows the championship. Bruce arguably knows how to get the best out of him. So he's going to start him. He's a high-profile player. He's a prem... He's one of those players that's probably maybe not quite good enough for the Premier League in some ways, even though he actually was quite effective in the first half of the season for Hull last year. But at the Championship, he's a top-level player. He was always a very good player when he was at Leeds. I think he was at Hull in the Championship as well. He's done yeah. done well there. He maybe was with Norwich in the Championship, but I don't think he was. I think he was just in the Prem there. So he's done it at Championship level. So he's an effective player. And he what? I don't. I didn't really think that we needed him. But I think when a player like that comes available and you've worked with a manager before and you know you've got a chance of getting it to get him, I think, it, again, it would have been silly not to get him. What do you think a player like Snodgrass... Because, obviously, a lot has been made in this off-season of us bringing in leaders. Snodgrass is a very, very experienced um, mover and shaker in the leagues. So he's been around. He's been around the international scene. Yeah. But he's quite a quiet player, isn't he? He's one of those wingers that you probably maybe don't expect um, to be that vocal in the dressing room. Or do you, do you get oh, a so different I, character? I think different... Yeah. I've always thought of him as someone who is quite vocal, who's not afraid to say what he thinks. Obviously, he's been quite vocal in what he said about Slaven Bilic at West Ham, so I don't think we'll be seeing him playing left midfield any time. I don't know whether you saw Snodgrass's comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think we'll be seeing him play, play there because he doesn't want, to pl- doesn't want to play there. He's quite brave of him, really, to, to drop down to come, to come to Villa, really. Yeah, I... I- I don't know. I like. I think it's different talking in the media and stuff when you've left a club, because he was also very complimentary of Aston Villa, which is well, which you expect that. which is what you're There's expected a script, to do. When yeah, Villa. and but yeah, but it's but it's for any club, isn't it? But with West Ham, he had such a bad time of it. You know, being such a like a ten million pound player and then just not being utilised at all. I think Slaven Bilic would probably forgive him for for the comments that he said. But it's on the pitch, isn't it? That is he going to be the guy that 
that marshals the midfield, not necessarily marshals, but, but kind of encourages, or do you not need that because we've got so many talkers in that team now already? There should be enough leaders in that team now for him not to have to do that. It's anyone you get that's a cajoler and that's a good talker is beneficial to you. It helps you with organisation and stuff when it's more defensive players. I'm not really sure it gives you as much in attack. I see him as being someone who'll play wide. Mm-hmm. He'll play wide right. But then I don't really see where Al Mohamedy fits in. That was my next in question. That, in that respect. He's a good signing. He's a good player. And I'm, I'm happy we've got him. And El Mohamedy, would you, if you had to put all your eggs in that basket, he goes to right back? Well, it's probably a good time to talk about someone. I can't remember who it was. I'll just get it up now. I don't think there's a place for Al Mohamedy in the team, if I'm being honest. If, I don't think we expected to get Snodgrass. Right. I don't think we expected a player of his calibre to be gettable and to come available. So I don't actually think... I think Al Mohamed is in a bit of trouble. Okay. I think he'll be a utility man, be a, be a squad player, but I don't see him as, start, as starting now. Mm-hmm. So Dave's Dan Smith Music, who asked what is our strongest eleven. So I've had a go here at doing it. It was actually really, really hard. Okay. This is um, all players... So this is, imagine if Villa are playing a cup final tomorrow. Okay. And to be honest, there's two I'm borderline with, I don't, don't, or maybe even three. Right. Because let me just reel up a list before I, before I name my team and bench. These are the players who I haven't even managed to get in the 18. Yep, OK. So, Bjarnson, Gabby, Adoma, Bree, Hutton, Elphick, O'Hare and Samba. So, there's a good amount of players. There's players that have played games already this season, not in my 18. So, right. that shows you the strength of the squad and it probably also shows you that we're quite bloated still. Yes, absolutely. And we could do with losing a couple. Yeah, go on then. So, I've got Johnston in goal. Delat, Chester, Terry, Taylor, back four. Whelan and Horahan, central mid, and Whelan was a borderline one with Yedinak. Snodgrass, Onoma, and Jonathan Codger as the three behind the striker. Codger on the left, Snodgrass on the right. And Keenan Davis up front. Again, that was borderline. Yeah. I think it's very harsh not to have Andre Green in there. It is. What I was doing was, I was trying to look for people that complement each other, so... With that... I didn't feel there was enough pace in the side at one point, so I had Green Green in there. Then I just feel like what I said earlier, Davis brings the best out of people. And I've heard a rumour that Codger is going to be playing some football wide this season, wide left. So I've put him there because I think he is effective there, cutting in. I just think there's a lot of variety in that side, and there's people that w- would complement each other. I think Onam is a really good player. Again, someone who surprised me how good he is. Yeah, listen, it's a it's a great problem to have, right? The the fact that there's so much so much attacking talent too now. much yeah exactly but I know that sounds stupid what happens if I mean if, I've left out McCormack there as well that, I, I, I'm not too too fussed about that um, but what happens if, if this team does play out and, and you need a squad because injuries happen that kind of thing what happens to a player like Andre Green who rumour has it that, that Bournemouth and Crystal Palace and teams like that are sniffing around and January comes and he's not playing that much football. We're in danger of losing one of our own well, again. You're never going to play the same 11 every week no, in the championship. Yeah. It's not going to happen. The league, there's so many games. You're, never, you're very rarely going to have the same 11 in consecutive matches. So, for example, some games, you wouldn't play on a maybe and Codger moves to the right. Well, that contradicts what I've just said. You wouldn't play Davis. Codger moves up front. There's a space for Green on the left. You'll see his fair share of... Fair share of football still. Yeah, especially as Davis is already... I don't know why we're pointing at this. Nobody can see it. No. Um, the, Davis has already seen some injury. Codger's coming back from injury. Um, Green's a young player. Onoma's a young player. Davis, they're, they're all young guys. You're going to have to use them in a rotational system when there's 46 games in a season plus um, cup games, plus their international um, experience as well. This is why you need a quality squad to get out of the championship. It's, it's imperative to have. And it does seem like we have that. And you, as you've already pointed out, the, the players that you've already left out of the team completely, off the substitutes bench as well, you know, yeah. we've, got, we've got some serious strength in depth there. I mean, my bench is Steer, El Mohamedy, Yedinak, Grealish, Lansbury, Hogan and Green. So basically I've put El Mohamedy as the cover fullback and he can play wide mm-hmm. midfield as well. And Yedinak as the cover centre-back just to get him on the bench because I couldn't get him on the bench otherwise because you're not going to leave Lansbury out of the 18. For me, Grealish is always going to be in the 18 when fit. So it's, it's actually really difficult. Steve Bruce has got a big job on his hands to keep people happy. Yeah, it'll be interesting if Onoma stays um, to continue producing the form that he's in at the moment where and when Grealish gets his chance to kind of break back into that team because it will be on him. Uh, it, well, there's, there's 
there is a chance for Jack Grealish to be the centrepiece of this Villa team, but he has to earn it as well. Well, Alima can play wide. Grealish could slot back into the number 10 or uh, vice versa Grealish could play wide if you really wanted him to Yeah, there's a lot of flexibility there's a lot, these players can play in different positions Snodgrass can play in the middle he can play wide on him on him at the same Codger can play up front he can play wide there's a lot of flexibility with some of the players you, as well you leave Jednak on the bench rather than Whelan as I say it's borderline the home games to me or up games against weaker opposition, Whelan offers you a little bit more because he can do the defensive work, albeit he's not as strong as Yednak, but his passing's better. I think Yednak hinders us going forward sometimes because he's not great going forward. He's not as bad as people make out, but he's not as effective as Whelan for me, but then he's better at doing the defensive side of the game. He's more useful from set pieces at both ends, although he's never scored. Yeah. So it's people for different occasions, I guess, as well, depending on, on who you're playing. Yeah, I uh, I actually think he can be as bad as people say going forward sometimes. Really? Uh, yeah, I just... I've seen him ping some nice passes. Yeah, but you're a, you're a championship, you're a Premier League footballer. You should be able to ping some nice passes. That like that's that's part of your job. Anyway, I say that, but the England game last night, some of them can't pass the ball two or three yards. Very very. Jordan true. Henderson's England captain, and I question how that decision has ever been made. I think Jordan Henderson is captain to go back onto England for a minute for a lack of other captain at the moment. You know, you're waiting for Harry Kane to really grab that. Harry Kane, he was playing at the back, mate. He was but ch- captain Chelsea's in the league last year. He got sent off in his first game. That's I don't true. think Cahill's... I, I'm not sure Cahill's no. exactly uh, England captain. But who knows? England is, is lacking a, a serious captain, I think, at the moment. And a central midfield. Let's get back on to your 11, or rather your Villa View 11. If you had the choice, who would you pick? Let us know in the comments. That'd be really, really interesting. Cool. We'll, we'll go through a couple maybe next week, yeah. depending on how exciting the Brentford game is. I mean, I expect my 11 to get ripped to shreds. People will say that's that's not the best 11. Because, again, at the end of the day, football's all about opinion. So my opinion is going to differ a lot from other people's yeah. opinions. There might be some people who agree with me. I'd be shocked if someone... That's the thing with so many players. I'd be shocked if you had anyone in the comments put the exact same 11. Yeah, I'd be shocked. I think there's a couple of surprises possibly in there, um, and definitely. Well, I think maybe there's a danger I overthought things. <laughs> no, too much. Back yeah. at work and you overthought things, but yeah. not work. I overthought that that eleven maybe, and I overthought the bench possibly a little bit. What do you make of uh, moving on? What yeah. do you make of the Ross McCormack rumor? Fenerbahce is supposed to be interested. Yeah, I heard that one. Yeah, uh, so is their window open still? Yes, it's open till Friday. Um, Robin Van Persie suffered a knee injury, not being in great form either. Robin Van Persie. Did he get a Dutch recall. I'm sure he, I read that Van Persie got a Dutch recall. He maybe got injured playing for Holland. He was in the squad definitely. Yes, you're right. Because yeah. at 34, that was that was a bit of a shock. Yeah. Um, so Fenerbahce reportedly looking at Snodgrass. Um, Snodgrass McCormack. Ah, uh, McCormack. Sorry, I just read Snodgrass there. Um, Look at your notes, not mine. Tom. That's true. That's true. It's very good that you've made notes. I um, made notes most weeks. So. Having, I am breaking this news to you. What do you think about it? Daily Mail. May as well. If we can get a fee or a percentage of it, high percentage of his wages paid, we may as well let him go because Bruce isn't going to use him. What about a small percentage of his wages paid at this point? And then we can recall him if necessary. I, I don't really get the argument. He's done, I think. But I think the fact he was on the bench in the cup game was a statement that Steve Bruce was hanging him out to draw. Yeah, that's fine, but... If you want to get any money for him, surely you should put him in some sort of shop window. And and like Matt Matt said this as well. He said, "No, we've got to have the either the fee or the um, or the wages paid." But we're paying them anyway, and he's not even in the squad, so he might as well yeah, be playing that, football somewhere. Fenerbahce paying ten percent of his wages isn't going to make the world of difference to our finances. But it is going to put Ross McCormack in the shop window, and then a six million fee might come in next year. I mean, I guess that's what we've done with Gary Gardner. He's gone on a lot. If we tried to, if we tried to sell him now, we wouldn't get much money for him. If he does well for Barnsley like he did in previous championship loans, we'll get more of a fee for him in the summer when it comes to selling. So it's sensible in that regard. But I kind of like the fact that we're not being taken for a ride anymore. I mean, I understand we've had some derisory offers for Elphick from Sunderland who didn't want to pay, pay the money on the wages or the fee. And we've just said, fine, lump it. We'll keep him. I quite like that. I think we kind of need to be doing that because we've been... We've been too easy yeah, to but deal with in recent years. McCormack seems like his own special bracket here, where he's played so such little football and he's had um, problems that have been fairly well talked about now at this point, that you're just not going to get the return that you think or that maybe you want to get, unless he shows that he can play somewhere. We're not allowing him to do that by, one, putting him in our squad, or two, um, 
sending him out somewhere else. So it just, to me, seems like a problem that's going to get worse and worse because he's not playing. Nobody's going to come in in January and go, oh, yeah, Ross McCormack, he's really well rested. Let's take him for £8 million. It just It's just not going to happen that way. I'd be surprised if the player wanted to go to Turkey. That's another thing you've got to take into account. Does he want to go and pl- live in Turkey for a year? Probably not. Oh, we don't know that, do we? I don't know, I'm just speculating. No, but it's, but the same, it's the same argument. I guess it's slightly different for Sunderland. You don't want to give away an asset to a potential rival in, in Turkey. There's no chance of that. Yeah, I guess that. that's fair. I guess that's fair. If we're giving him away from peanuts to Sunderland and he suddenly makes Sunderland better, yeah. we look stupid. If we give him away to Fenerbahce for peanuts, he's not doing us any harm, like you say. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that's sensible. Yeah. I agree with what you're saying there. You've changed my mind. Oh, good. Well done. Thank you. A footballing point, Tom that Julian made. Point. Thank that you. was a good point. Maybe the week on my you're own. Learning. It did me good. You are learning. I need to stand on my own two feet. Um, I have put that here. You took control instead of riding my coattails. <laughs> oh, right. Well, I, I had no put, choice, I did I? I put that in my notes. <laughs> I can't believe you wrote that down. In case I forgot to say. Oh, thank you very no much. Worries. What else you got on your notes there, Dan? Uh, Jake Dor Hayes signed a new contract prior to the podcast this afternoon yes I saw good that good news 18 years old looks a good player yeah three year deal which is which is great he obviously um, made his full debut this season as well which is and and has impressed as well in pre-season and, and looks sharp doesn't he well he's taken over Jordan Lydon in the pecking order mm-hmm. who is a decent prospect someone who's I fear is going to go the same way of Gary Gardner because I think he's been curtailed by injuries the last few years he looks a good player he looks like he's got a bit about his game he's He's busy, he gets around the pitch, his passing's pretty reliable. He looks a good player, he's got good reviews in the under-23s, he was a regular in the under-23s last season. So He's been captain as well, hasn't he? I yeah, think. It's, a good, it's, a good, it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. It's good for us to be securing these young players. And I think there, there seems a real desire in the club to get some young players through at Villa again, which is what we've always done well. Yeah, like you Going about the Villa way, things that are doing things the Villa way, bringing through good academy footballers, even if they don't make it with Villa, they usually go on and make it somewhere else. We've got the, we need to be getting back to that. It's a very good point. Um, slight segue. When you're playing football manager and you're watching England, do you go after players like Jake Dorhays? Hayes? Is that, do you go and search them, see how much they cost and that kind of thing and, and see if you can bring them in? in it, mate. Is he not? I'm seven years into my season with Oh, Bradford, right, yeah. So I doubt he's even there anymore. Well, there's a little bit of homework for you. you start in general, again. I like to buy young players. Do you? In football manager, yeah. I've got a very effective Brentford thing going on. Have you? At the moment, we're doing very well. Are you in the Premier League? Yeah. Challenging. Europa League semi finals at oh, the moment, yeah. Good. When I get back, that's what I'll be getting into. <laughs> good luck to you. Thank you. Um, I'll let you know how, you, how I get on. What else have we got? So, um, that's it. The transfer window is almost done, pending Ross McCormick. Turkey shot? Friday. Friday. Good night again. I didn't know that. So, yeah, it all. Uh, the you door will the, the door will swing shut potentially on Ross McCormack's face. Potentially not. He might um, he might head out there. Uh, another tidbit for you. Either way, he's laughing, isn't he? Still on forty grand a week. Whatever happened? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't. I'd love to be a fly on the wall because, I mean, I think you tweeted it out actually the other day. A Bleacher Report football, um, f- following around Chris Wilder from Sheffield yeah, United. Yeah, moving up. So if you haven't seen this on Twitter, go and search it out. Bleacher Report. Is that um, my Twitter somewhere. It certainly is on Dan Bardell's Twitter feed as well. If you can scroll that far. Uh, basically, Bleacher Report got to follow around Sheffield United manager Chris Wilder. Um, and it just showed you how much um, hassle there is on transfer deadline day. I think Sheffield United were after five players. They ended up getting two. two yeah. And m- the main reason for them not getting players seemed to be agents interfering and and just trying to mess with the finances. Broken promises. I, I thought he came off very well. Yeah. I don't know whether he changed his persona a little bit because he knew he was being video, but he seemed a, a proper football man. I think he seems like that. And, no anyway, nonsense. He's, he's quite. A, he's doing a good job as well. He just wants things to be done. I think if he had his day, he could just fast forward through that day and hope to just get to the end with three or four players. But my point was. Man just wanted to play Paul. Yeah, he did. He did. He was quite good as well. Yeah. Um, I wonder what Ross McCormack's thoughts are here and whether he's been manipulated at all by his agent by I mean you, you're right 40 grand a week to sit on sit on the bench or three not three years left on his contract as well yeah not even do that is is a luxury that, that 99% of people don't have but at the same time there's a professional and a personal desire to play football that's what he got into it for yeah. I wonder if it's still there your it, career's short yeah you'll look back in five years time and think oh you, do, you don't want to look back in five years time and think you know what I should have just gone because I, st- I could have still done the job for someone, I could have still scored goals, got that feeling of elation when you put the ball in the back of the net, the crowd singing your name. Yeah. Because he'll miss that when it's gone. He's 31 years old, so he's got 
four years potentially you know four or five years to play at a decent level especially Fenerbahce they're probably chasing Europe at least I imagine they're in the Champions League yeah. or around the Europa League or something so it's a it's an option and we'll see I mean it's also a Daily Mail story so it may not even be true um, that might be another bit of agent fabrication fake news so yeah could be fake news who knows uh, tell you what's not fake news what John Carew's birthday today and George Boateng is it birthday as well yeah Dutch Dutch Ghanaian whatever <laughs> um should we get some comments? Or have we got anything else on your long list? Anything else you want to say about John uh, Carew? No, no. We're going to wish him a happy birthday. A happy birthday, John Carew. And George. And George. Get George. Um, yeah, I just saw that on uh, on Twitter earlier. And yeah. Made me smile. I've got a game for you. Ooh, hit me. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a returning game. Is it a squad number game? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not prepared. I th- exactly. Yeah, you'll get me to that. I thought because it was a international week and a few people enjoyed playing along at home with the uh, squad Robinson number game. Dan enjoyed playing. Yeah. Uh, we had a few tweets where, where obviously, if you, if you missed this, it was a few weeks ago now, Dan challenged the world. He said he could name any squad number from Villa in the Premier League Nine era. Four onwards, I said. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, that's still not a problem for okay. me. Um, and he did it five out of five last time. It was absolutely amazing. And there was some, I'll do it this there's time. some real intensity, uh, tense moments in the studio. So I've got them again. Do you want to do many, those? Is it five again? Five, yeah. Go on then. I've, I think I'll come a cropper though. All right. Because I've gone up a notch as well. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Right. I've done my research on youth prospects of the time. So, <laughs> so if you're uh, if you're playing along at home, get a pen and pencil. Move that way, I can kind of search. Oh, can you? Yeah. Well, I didn't, I didn't see anything. It's quite small. I could have seen. All right. Okay. We'll start. Do you want to go from latest to earliest or earliest to latest? I'd rather go from earliest because then I can work my way forward. Okay. That kind of ruins my surprise, but fine. Okay. Okay. I'll do more. Do you want? All right, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll do, I'll do whatever I want. I'm the boss. What did you ask me then? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's go latest. 2010 to 2011. Yeah. Number eight. Pires. Yeah, nice easy, easy one to start. Easy to start. Yeah, yeah. ease me in. Yeah. Uh, 2008, 2009. Number sixteen. Is that night? Is that night? Two out of two. Feeling good. Um, all right, a quick little... as well. That is two quick answers. Yeah, there. very good. Uh, if if anyone beat you at home, there, very very well done. Um, I feel a bit like Richard Osman at the moment. If you're playing along at home, well done. Um, you are pointless. Is he the guy just pointless? <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, from 2004 2005 season. This is where it steps up yeah, a this bit. Because I've got to go back and think what season that was. Number sixteen again. 2004, 2005. I'm going to have to go back and do... I think I know who it is. I'm going to have to go back and do the maths to make sure okay. I'm on the right season. So, Gregory left in... It's going to be really boring for people at home. Can you tell me who the manager was at that point? So I know I've got the right season. No, I, I can't, not, no. Uh, not in the 2000 FA Cup. You have to fill the time while I work back. Well, I can only give clues, really. No, no, I don't want clues, but he's... 04, 05, I'm just trying to work out which season that was. It was the one that started in September 2004. I think it would have been August, mate, but... <laughs> yeah, oh, no. <laughs> but it definitely tried, ended in you, May. You, you've, you've tried to be clever. I know. You've well, tried well, to well, be well. clever. I need a pen. Have I got a pen? Uh, a pen handy, quick look. I don't have a pen, no. You've got ten seconds. No, no. That's oh, not, there's pens up there. That's not long enough. <laughs> so, 99-2000, we got to the FA Cup final. Do you remember we what did, We didn't number? win. 2000-2001... Gregory, we finished eighth or something like that. O one, o two was when Gregory left. You were uh, method for working this out. O three was Super Graham strange. Taylor. O three, o four would have been O'Leary. Is it o four o five? Yeah, Matthew O'Burson. He's got it. I don't know how. Because I just needed to know which season it was. Did, was that the, what, who you were yeah, thinking from had, the start? Yeah, right. yeah. Fair enough. Uh, again, well done if you got that at home. If you're three for three, uh, it really heats up now. 97 to 98. And I'm not going to give you as long this time. Okay, I don't need as long as I know what, what that season was. Number two. 97, 98. Number two. Gary Charles. Gary Charles is four out of four. This is it. The 1994, 95 season. Number 17. 94, 95. 17. Ian Taylor. It is Ian yeah. Taylor. I thought I'd get no. you with a with a little squad five chain. Out of five again. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Dan Bardell, the undisputed king of the squad numbers. That's with no research or anything. Just 
didn't know it was coming, did Were not. you feeling the pressure there? I thought you were going to get me with some, like, complete unknown youngsters and stuff, like <laughs> someone like David Farrell. Or I didn't want to do anyone that like had that. never played or anything yeah. like that, because I think that's unfair, but... This is this is. I struggled with the math. That was the problem of knowing which season 04 or five was. I could have got that straight away. It was the first person that came to my head, but I just wasn't convinced that was the right season. The fact that Dan had absolutely no idea that was going to come, and you still got five out of five. It. I mean, one, it's testament to you being incredibly sad, but it is a skill. It is an absolute skill. Mastermind. I could go and mastermind with that. You could. Right, let's do some comments. Let's finish with some comments, shall we? Hey there, we've got, I've got to mention, if you, we should probably talk about the Villa View. Sorry, I'm going to take that off, man. We should probably talk about the Villa View as it is the Villa View podcast. Of course. So there's been one video, I think, since the last podcast. Uh, yeah, that yeah. That was the charity game. Watch me and Matt embarrassing ourselves against Lee Hendry and Darren Byfield, former Villa players, but all for a good, all for a good cause for the QE. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that video, and perhaps donate if you could do that. That'd be great. It is a good watch because it's me embarrassing myself in goal because I'm no good in 11 aside goals. I'm still waiting for my call up. As the best member of uh, the Villa View at football, I'm still waiting for my call you up. You are yeah. the best member <laughs> of football, to be fair. Oh, dear. Today's to be fair. I think, I, I think I'm better outfield than Matt. I just had to go in goal on that occasion because they'd never goalkeeper. And they'd seen me on the video of the Bodymore Heath game and the seven aside goals, which is my that is my realm. That's your forte. The seven aside goal. Yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, Matt does have a couple of chances. And uh, spoiler alert, he doesn't score. No. <laughs> no. What's next? What else have we got coming up on the Villa View? So, I believe af- before the Middlesbrough game on Tuesday, there's another fans consultation group, the first one of the new season. So, if you've got any questions or concerns that you have with Aston Villa, mate, whether it be catering or the shop, season tickets, season tickets, oh, no, maybe not season tickets. Well, I think you have problems with the delivery. Well, absolutely, there? I think, and but they're yeah. what you have to bring up, aren't they? So, so yeah, the ticketing again at Reading was a little bit uh, suspect as well. So yeah, any, yeah, any problems or anything you want us to try and ask in that consultation group, then leave them in the comments below, and mm-hmm. we'll try our best to get them put on the agenda. We can't guarantee that everything we feed back to Villa will be put on the agenda, but the chances are one or two will be so if you could do that and other right. other fan groups will be there as well so the yeah. questions will come and I, I guess most of the questions that fans care about will be answered there yeah yeah Keith Wynes usually usually does it so obviously it's a good chance to put questions to the chief exec but obviously don't say anything like we should be using Ross McCormack because or something along of that ilk because that isn't going to get isn't going to get asked yep fair enough uh, yep. Brentford preview Brentford preview we'll be filming prior to the Brentford game probably on Thursday Makes sense. Or Friday, it makes sense to do a preview before the game, as yep. you've just pointed out. <laughs> uh, I think Matt and I are filming something tomorrow on the transfer window, just a little review of the business Villa have done, so I've tried not to talk about it too much in tonight's podcast, so that's coming up as well. Yeah, it's fan cams, obviously, Saturday, Tuesday. Yeah, I'll be there. We've had a few requests um, for, for the great man Marlon Harewood to come on the podcast. We are we are doing We're our best, aren't we? Avenues. The best avenue would be if maybe as many people who anyone who listens to this podcast or watches the podcast if you can get on him in a nice manner <laughs> yeah. on Twitter to get him to come on the podcast that's probably the best chance we've got yeah leave the swear words at home say yeah. say we're big fans you're big fans and uh, who um, isn't a big fan of the big man that was nice nice yeah, yeah. very good Yeah, once scored a hat trick against Villa didn't they yeah. for West Ham or, or Reading or whoever no, no, whoever he played for Reading, was that know. who I talked about before? yeah yeah you yeah. got it completely wrong that was my, my first Early week podcast. you've grown you've grown up Grown up since then, matured. Thank you. Football knowledge has come on slightly. Up, up at notch one now. Um, I will say that on my on my uh, solo podcast, which wasn't really a solo podcast, um, yeah. I, I got an eight out of ten and nine out of ten. Did you give me a rating this week? This week for that? Not really. No. <laughs> okay. Guess great. Ten out of ten. Yeah. I think Except for Dolan, <laughs> give him a six. They were all very very good. We had a we had a lovely time. Did you? Have we got the comments? Uh, uh, you have, yeah. I can read some of the comments, in fact. Okay. Tor Lovestad, thanks for listening and watching as usual, Tor. Big uh, watcher of the Villa View. Nine out of ten, Tom Julian. Still a bit weird not having Dan Bardell in the studio. Thank you. Hopefully that changes in the next podcast. Well, Tor, you'd be delighted to learn that I'm here. Uh, yeah, I actually did think... I think I acknowledged on the podcast that it was weird not to have you. Yeah, you probably did. And I like doing it with you. Yeah, no, so, no. Uh, there you go. Max Stokes, fair play, Tom. Did very well this week. Solid... 8 out of 10. Max will be delighted to learn that his socks are en route. I finally 
sorted the competition prizes out. Believe it when you wear them, Max. We did another competition soon to revive Imagine that dream yeah. about it. What was it? Um, I know you can't remember it either. Yeah, yeah. The panic was, on your face. No, no, it was the shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I wasn't in charge of sending that out. <laughs> so that was fine. That so it made it straight away. Yeah. Yeah. We've got here Rob Z, Dan Bardell, who? You can't really put the second name and then say who. <laughs> you have to just put Dan who, really, for it to make sense, don't you? Oh, uh, yeah. Because ob- yeah. obviously you've answered it. Dan yeah. Bardell, who answers. Did, am I wrong there? No, I think you're right. The only thing that would have been better if you just tagged him in it. I don't think you can on YouTube. No, you can't. No. No. Darren Woolley. Dan will be looking over his shoulder now, Tom. Great video. Good point made. Uh, a couple of people have already watched the uh, Queen Elizabeth charity game. Adam Little says uh, that definitely was some shocking goalkeeping uh, there, Dan. Lol. Thank you. Nah, great video for a great cause. Well done, lads. I really enjoyed it. Um, and Nathan Moore says some good commentary. Uh, I got some good laughs watching that. So if you uh, if you wanted some better reviews other than Dan and myself to go and watch it. You know, the, the the comments are right there. People are enjoying watching it. Yeah, I do enjoy doing I actually enjoy doing the commentary more than playing in the game, to be fair. I'm, I think I'm a better commentator than I am than I am footballer. I mean, you would just have to say words and you'd be better at being a commentator than you are a footballer. Yep, should we get some questions from Twitter? Yeah, very quickly, we're uh, we're, we're approaching our limit. That's somewhere to be, have you? That's a long way home. It was an hour last week when I was an here. Yeah, you, that's you, true. You could make it an hour last week all of a sudden. <laughs> all right, then, go Maybe on. if you'd have got, the right, got on the train. <laughs> what, what have you got? <laughs> it would have, have longer. Uh, Stuart Reid's pleased to have me back. Welcome back, Dan. Jason Price, question for you, Dan. Are you too big time to follow back on Instagram now? It's accidental, Jason. I didn't realise you followed me on that platform. I will look into rectifying that shortly my tweets aren't loading right now right, you're helpful yep I'm out of here Freddie Green wants to know where Marlon's coming on as a guest we've been teased enough we all we all been teased <laughs> enough we all want it I yeah. believe that one day it can happen I hope so that'd be great Mazer, reach out to us Dan Smith obviously we've covered the strongest 11 Ginger Luke who appeared on the podcast last week wants Tom to say an in between as quote friend friend well done is Luke Class Luke as your friend now yeah, we had a chat yeah, last said, week. Yeah. It was great. You yeah. know, we're buddies. I think we're. Uh, I, I think he called me out for not following him on uh, oh, did Twitter it? as well. You rectified it. Yeah, oh yeah, this was, a a, this was social, ages ago. Yeah. A lot of social media battles. Well, it's not on. so much a battle. It's yeah, just yeah. connecting people. Yeah. Darren Russon, no question for me. Just a Rafa Benitez fact. Tom is the linchpin of the Villa view. No pin, pun intended. No pin. No pun intended. I think. No, I can't go along with that, I'm afraid. <laughs> I said... Uh, I'd say there's three other candidates that are more the linchpin than you. Well, there can't be three. Well, there can be. Who? Me, Matt and Dan Rollinson. Well, he's not more linchpin than, than the podcast. No, not the podcast. He didn't say podcast. He said the Villa View. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. Dan Rollinson is the uh, is the undisputed linchpin, which I did put on Twitter. Yeah. Some brown nose trying to get himself, <laughs> trying to get himself more involved. Please let me do something else. Oh, fan cams, please. Don't go to a game first, Tommy. You can do I'm fan always cams. at games. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, do you think Davies and Codger could play up front together Tom Brooks I do think they could play together and it's perhaps something that would work but I don't think we'll get to see much of it because I don't think you'll see us play two up front that'd be very many very occasions. very interesting Codger obviously um, edging ever closer to a return uh, there's still no fixed date I don't believe um, but it would be very interesting to see those guys play together like you say Davies brings other players into the game and that might be uh, he might just be exactly what um what could you need? Joseph Ireland, what's your view on Elphick and McCormack both staying at Villa? Obviously, we've spoke about McCormack. I'm quite pleased Elphick stayed, to be honest, because I think he's someone we may need at some point, and I was impressed with him in the Cup game when he came. I think he's a decent option as a third, fourth centre-back, arguably a better option than Samba as a third centre-back. Yeah, Samba hasn't covered himself in glory um, particularly, and, and like you say, Elphick, Elphick can do a job, and you, I think you've always kind of said that he should be third or fourth choice and at the moment it, it kind of looks like he might be uh, well probably not quite edging out Samba but he's definitely going to battle him for it now he's um, now he's staying till yeah. January he will be used he will come back into the first team picture mm-hmm. I would think this is a good question I like this one Tonks Tonka Smith 96 why have we conceded so many goals is Terry good enough anymore should we have let Baker go how much do we miss Yedinak I don't really know why we've conceded so many goals I don't think that Steve Bruce or no? Either. I think maybe just the f- Baker and Chester seemed to hit it off immediately from the first time they were paired together and we kind of stumbled upon a good partnership. 
there. But obviously, you buy John Terry, you, you're going to play him. I just don't think John Terry's got used to the championship yet. I'm not blaming him for the reason why we've conceded so many goals. Uh, no, but I mean, I think it's a contributing factor. He's not got used to the league yet. He's not stamped his authority on the league. I'd say. Watching the games, a few of our goals have been really cheap, and it feels a bit like we've been caught ball watching which seems very amateur like certainly certainly from the Reading game and the two from Norwich as well I felt like the the, the striker Oliveira and, and a couple of the other guys had kind of drifted off and we talked about this before whereas actually the, the five years ago John Terry that never ever would have happened um, and again it's not just John Terry's fault but as a defensive unit I still don't think we've quite Gelled and we're quite sure of ourselves. No, no. Yeah. And and the goals, some of the goals that we've let in have been a little bit sloppy. I thought um, the Bristol one was unlucky more than anything. People say we didn't clear the danger. I thought that was unlucky, not getting the rub of the green. Yeah, it, that happened both both sides. But then you look at Bristol City and there was three potential shouts for handball and stuff like that. And like it just felt a, still a little bit disjointed. Um, I think it'll come. That's what I was going to say. say. Yeah, I think you need to set settle on which right back he's going to play. And then you've got a chance to cement your back four. I know I'm going about rotation, but your back four in the main should stay the same unless for injuries and suspension. Yeah. So he's obviously got three of the back four and the goalkeeper sorted. He just needs to sort which right back he's going to have. Yeah, again, I'd like to see a good performance against Brentford, a solid performance from the back four. It's just putting it together, isn't it? Putting the defence, uh, defensive performance and the attacking creativity together. And we don't seem to be able to get both, do we? No. It just doesn't seem to... Uh, Seem to work, like but I, I don't mind if we're going to win. If we're going to score four goals each game, then I, I don't mind it. Too Mate, much. I don't care if we win one nil or five nil. Just want to win. Just want to get out of this league. Fair enough. Get us back in the cha- get us back in the Premier League. Burhan Gore, Hopefully, I've said your name right, mate. At Brum knows best. After the doctor's tweet the other day, do you think Bruce's days are numbered at Villa if he has a bad September and who could replace him? I think Bruce will know himself. He's got to get. A, he's got to get a certain amount of points. We've already covered it. We're we're eighteenth at the moment. You know, if we come out of September and we're still eighteenth, yeah, you'll there's be trouble. there's no way that that Bruce can feel comfortable being in that position. So, like you say, he knows himself that he needs to uh, he needs to pull his socks up. In some ways, I think August can be forgiven because I actually think that fixture list was pretty tough in August compared to September. I think nah. Cardiff away is a tough game. Reading will be up there away. That's a tough game. Not many teams will go to Bristol City and get anything. That's three tough away games. Yeah, that's fine. We've won the home game in the league, and we've drawn a home game. But we're one of the we're one of the best no, teams in this that. league. But I think it's. I'm not saying it's acceptable, but I'm saying you can understand it. I look at those September fixtures, and I think you've got to win most of those games if you want to get promoted. Yeah, uh, this this is uh, we, we are taking on. I think four teams at home, and a bunch of them are are even below us, which which is which is pretty odd. Um, so you're right; they they are tough games. I'm not forgiving it. Like three 0 at Cardiff is atrocious. That's yeah. not acceptable. Yeah, we should we should be in those games to challenge them. For but you're going to lose. Sure. You're going to lose games. So Cardiff away is one. You can just say, okay, they're going to be up there. Yeah, I I, I, I don't think... like it, but I accept it. Uh, the 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 shock for me and for for a lot of Villa fans, I think, was that it's the same old, and that was the most disappointing thing. Yeah, you know, the yeah, performance yeah. is really, really, I completely understand that. Very disappointing. But I think since then, there's been signs that we're changing for the better. Let's hope so, and hopefully, long may that continue. Yeah. To end here with a, just a bit of a strange question, which I it's from villain at Staines 2012. Dan, can we get your wife on the podcast wearing her glasses and in a villa kit? Oh no, absolutely oh, not. No, I'm not sure where the glasses come into it. Oh, I, I can tell you what the glasses are. Uh, like a naughty secretary. Yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, Listen, this is a PG podcast. Yeah, it's a family show. Like that. Good grief! Yeah, I just thought it was a bit strange. Stains 2012. Get back in your box. Yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> are we going to finish on that? No, are we? I probably shouldn't. Um, I don't know what else we can finish on. Have we? Have we missed anything? I haven't spoke about financial fair play. I was going to just mention that because apparently we've escaped yeah. punishment by raising £18 million. I don't even see why that's a story. Because basically, if that's true, we've just done what you have to do. To yeah, that's not really escaping. That's just <laughs> participating in financial yeah. fair play. Escaping financial fair play to me is more like what Paris Saint Germain are doing. Exactly. They're escaping financial fair play. Yeah. There's not much financial fair play going on there. All right. We're done? Yeah, I think so. You can go and ask your wife if she wants to come on the podcast. I'm and, uh, not going to mention that to her, to be honest. I she's wouldn't. unlikely to listen. Uh, great to have you back. Thank Thanks, you very Pat. much for enjoying for for enjoying for, for being <laughs> with me. I think you've been very presumptuous. I <laughs> yeah. enjoyed being with you. Thanks for enjoying the show. Thanks for uh, rising to the occasion and uh, another five out of five performance in the uh, squad number game. 
Uh, no worries. I'll, I'll smash that game for the most part. I'd say it will come again in uh, and when you least expect it. So it could end up being next week because you because you may think that I'll think you'll slack off and not do it so soon. And lure lure you into this yeah. false sense of security. Yeah, I'm ready now. I did think about it earlier. It did cross my mind actually that it may be something that you'd do. No, we'll see. I'll smash you anyway. Uh, if you're going to the Brentford game, enjoy come and, and see um, me. come and see me after the game. Come and do some fan cams. You're doing the get fan some, cams? Get some new blood. That'd be awesome. On there. And Middlesbrough Tuesday. I'll be doing both. Wow, busy boy. Yeah, I'm a busy boy. Reviews. Let's get some reviews. Oh, yeah, yeah please. You, you do it. You guys are uh, uh, very, very helpful watching and listening and, uh, and commenting, and that's all brilliant, but... Uh, if you could leave an iTunes review, it feels like we say it every week, but apparently we don't. Um, no. <laughs> please, please do. It's very easy to do. Just go onto your podcast uh, app and, and write a little review. Four, five stars are obviously uh, uh, I think we're appreciated. On, I think we're on 46 at the moment. Let's, get, let's hit 50. Yeah? Let's hit 50 by 48 hours time. 50 oh, wow, reviews. I was going to say by next week. No, no, 48 hours time I'm giving you. I want to say, just if you enjoy the podcast, it really helps promote us if you could, if you could leave a positive Review it really helps. The more good reviews you get, the further you move at the pecking order. So that'd be great. That's Please exactly do right. that for us. Nice one. And we'll continue to deliver the podcast. We will. We'll try our best. Yes. Thank you very much as ever for listening, watching, sticking with us, listening to Tom's rubbish. We're back, we're back next week, Wednesday night. I guess we'll be filming because Villa are playing on Tuesday next week. Makes sense. So yeah, we'll have Tom back in the studio with me. No absences, although he has told me today he's got an absence coming up so I don't know what we'll do then but we will sort something out the podcast will be every week forever no Julian no podcast no Julian no podcast I have to get your mum on <laughs> All right, <laughs> enough Let's go about why she doesn't get you any Christmas presents or birthday presents thank you so much for watching we'll see you next week bye cheers if you enjoyed that video why not watch another click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left easy peasy